Welcome back to the, to the story check-in for educator.com. And in this lesson, we are going to be discussing conflicts. Turns out you can't be a human being without conflicts, and you can't have a story without conflicts either. Here's the first story that I'm going to share with you today. A man wakes up. He thinks to himself, I want a ham and cheese omelet. He walks out of his apartment building and goes to a cafe across the street. He orders an omelet, eats, and goes home. He even remembered to tip his waitress. Now I'm going to show you the next version of this story. A man wakes up late because his power is out. He thinks, I want an omelet. He fumbles around until in the dark until he finds his keys. Frustrated at the power loss, then he opens the window and sees that the cafe's windows are boarded up across the street. He hears sirens and the noise of helicopters, and then he sees dead bodies stumble through the streets. Oh no, cried the man, it's a zombie apocalypse. Which story sounded more interesting to you? Well, I certainly hope that it's story two, even if you don't like zombies, that's still a lot more interesting than eat omelet, go home. One of the great film producers of the 20th century was a fellow by the name of Alfred Hitchcock. He wrote a lot of scary stories, but this applies to everything. Drama is real life with the dull parts removed. Drama is real life with the dull parts removed. So what makes something exciting and not dull? How do I know when to just remove something when it's boring in a story? Well. A good conflict. You have to generate that. You have to see that in the story to be concerned about the story. Otherwise, it's just going to be a sleeper. Now, there are several types of conflicts, and these are all kind of archetypes, if you will, several different kinds that most people who are reading books and most people who are writing books generally agree on. Now, if you think that there are more types of conflicts than this, go ahead, let me know, and we'll share it and share it with everybody. But for now, let's just go over these. First off, we have to understand conflicts as kind of obstacles. A character or a group wants something, but there's something in between them and the goal. Think about story two. Our man wants an omelet. Well, what's in his way? Well, it's not just a street anymore. It's the zombie apocalypse is between him and his omelet. Maybe he's never going to get that omelet, but I bet you I could write an entire story about a man who just really wants an omelet, and he will do anything in the zombie apocalypse to get it. But there are other types of examples like that. Think about any movie that you've seen. Think about the beginning of the movie. You learn who the main character is, right? Do you learn about who his friends are? Do you learn about what mission they're on, what they want to do, what they want to accomplish? But do they get it right away? Well, no. If they did, there would, it would be a very short and very boring movie. So there's an entire next section, Acts 2 and 3, if you remember, that, all, that are all about this conflict, this obstacle, this thing that is between the characters we like and their goal. 